welcome to Orient Today, live on ONTV. I'm Joe Johnson, and once again, I'm joined by Kim Urbanowski. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How was your weekend? Wonderful, wonderful. We got out of town for a little bit. My parents um, invited us up camping in Mackinac City, so it took, you know, 40% of the kids that we have, so two of them, <laughs> and um, Lee and I, and went up there and um, did some things I haven't done before and seen some things I haven't seen. Nice. Yeah. Do you deliberately get away from Dream Cruise, or was that just a coincidence? To be honest with you, I did, we didn't even think about it until um, we got up there, and we were like, maybe, it, because it wasn't so busy, mm -hmm. right? You know, it was like, are the kids going back to school? Is it because people are at the Dream Cruise? We didn't yeah. know, but it was kind of nice because it wasn't too busy. Well, that's my thing uh, this past weekend. Uh, I've come to embrace Dream Cruise, and I love mm -hmm. being surrounded in that environment, and uh, I went down, uh, first of all, on Friday morning, uh, the M1 Concourse in Pontiac uh, does an event. It, it's in their second year. They moved it to Friday. Uh, and then Friday night, they do, uh, they have dignitaries get together in Ferndale where the Dream Cruise started yeah. and have a big ribbon cutting ceremony and kick off with lots of speeches and everything like that. So uh, that's where I was all day Friday, all day Saturday. Um, even though the, uh, there was threat of rain and thunderstorm, thunderstorms on yeah. Saturday. So, you know, people with classic cars yeah. don't want to get caught in the rain. <laughs> no. Um, there's some video on the screen now. There's the ribbon cutting ceremony. Oh, nice. Uh, immediately following the ribbon cutting ceremony, they have an emergency vehicle parade with lights and sirens. Uh, it's quite the spectacle to see. I mean, yeah. there's dozens and dozens well, and dozens. Well, that one's cool. Look at yeah. That. And, uh, and they were all parked on Nine Mile Road, uh, and then off they went, and that kicked off the start of Dream Cruise. There's a view from uh, Dugan's Pub on, uh, on Woodward. Uh, I hung my phone out my car a few times <laughs> as I was driving around trying to get some video as people were going by, and I just everywhere you turn, That's there's nice. just beautiful, beautiful cars everywhere. I just really get a kick out of it. Um, one thing that does drive me crazy, and a lot of people, is as you watch the video, you see a lot of SUVs, you mm. see a lot of minivans, and it's like, you know what's going on. Right. Why are you on Woodward? Right. Uh, my friend's Monkey Mobile was there. That's the original Monkey Mobile from the TV show. There's a Starsky and Hutch, uh, Gran Torino went by. Look at that uh, one of my in. favorites, the uh, Vacation Family Truckster. It's a beaut, Clark. <laughs> I think you hate it now. Wait till you drive it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I'm in my element. I'm in heaven during Dream Cruise. And it's a shame that the threat of thunderstorms made people uh, leave early. They never did arrive. Like, right. as far as I know, it never really did rain at all. So people cut out early uh, because uh, the weathermen told them to yeah. and, uh, and they didn't need to. Um, but I had seen online and on the news that Jay Leno was there over the weekend. Yeah, he's a big uh, classic car guy. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. He might have been doing an episode for his show, the Jay Leno's Garage. Um, and then I saw some pictures of Bob Seger was cruising around yeah. Woodward. It's like I wish I would have run into some of these people, but <laughs> you usually do. I know. I usually have pretty good luck, yeah. and uh, yeah. But it was it was a blast. It was a lot of fun, and it just comes and goes so quickly and. The numbers that I've heard people throw out is uh, a million and a half visitors no from kidding. all over uh, and at least 40,000 classic cars either driving or parked uh, along the 10 mile stretch that makes up a uh, dream cruise. That's so, insane. Yeah, so uh, that, that's fun. I'm in my happy place yeah. uh, during dream cruise, yeah. I've been there a couple of times. It's been a while, but you know, yeah. it's pretty fun. I know people that live in that area, they just want to get away from it. They don't want to deal with it, it but that happens with any festival that you have in any any area that's, you know, closed off or whatever. It's it is Now crazy. some some homeowners in the area, they took advantage of it. I was looking for a place to park in the in the subdivisions off to the side and People were waving me into their driveway and said, hey, for 10 bucks, you can park in our no driveway. Way. I said, I'm in. So, oh, that's yeah, kind of cool. Made some money over the weekend. That's really nice. That's <laughs> so, so that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah. And so uh, coming up this week, uh, something that not a lot of people seem to be aware of, there's a major anniversary taking place on Friday, 
August 26th. I'm not talking about my birthday, which falls on August 26th. <laughs> um, but there is a big deal on August 26th. Not a lot of people know that Lake Orion High School opened its doors 1997 wow. uh, on August 26th. The, what we refer to as the new high school, new high school. is 25 years old. That's uh, crazy this week. to think about. 25. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't feel like it's 25 years old when you're in there. No. Then again, you can't see much when you're in there because of all the kids. But <laughs> I mean, you know. And they were all, you know, they the school was so much bigger than what is now what the Cirque Building, which was yes. the high school. Yeah. But they filled it like fairly quickly like yeah. it reached capacity pretty quickly over there um yeah. it's amazing it's just incredible to see how the community has embraced that school and it just feels like it's always been yeah. there um but there was the elizabeth street school which uh is closed right now but um, Eman center. The, uh yeah yeah the art yeah yeah the Eman yep. center uh then there was a cirque building and i guess they're talking about some renovation to the cirque building soon i think um, they are yeah like yeah. they're going to demolish part of it but keep part of it or yeah. something yeah. um and now there's the high school so we have a little surprise for you. I think you might get a kick out of this, especially the beginning part uh, when you see this young guy with padded shoulders uh, <laughs> talking about the new high school opening its doors. Oh Let's take a look at this clip. Though you might not know it by looking at it, the new high school opened its doors to students on time the morning of August 26th. We visited the school later that week to see how things were coming along. Give credit to the staff and faculty who spent a good part of the summer moving from the former high school for making sure the doors opened on time. Taking a tour of the new school revealed that most of the classrooms were full and teachers were busy getting their lesson plans up and going. More than 1,800 people are using the new building, including, for the first time, ninth graders. The staff and faculty, uh, I think it's been a, a transformation from what we were used to to what the facility, you know, now that we are able to occupy, um, there's just really no comparison between the two. So I guess it's sort of been like a, an awakening and a transformation. Um, and with that comes getting used to things and a lot, you know, some stress, um, some insecurity and instability. Um, but in spite of all that, faculty and staff, by 8 o'clock Monday morning, were in classrooms teaching kids and, um, and students were learning. You know, they talk about being confused and being frustrated and having to find their way. Um, and we know that's going to happen and we have many volunteers on site to help people find their places. But by day two, I was amazed at the large number of students who went where they knew they needed to go. It was fantastic. If you look at the exterior of the building, you'll see that construction was continuing even after the first day of school. Yet to be completed is the school gymnasium, the auditorium and the swimming pool. Until construction is complete, auto tech and engineering classes, band and choral, and physical education classes will be held at the former high school. Still under construction are the auditorium, the gymnasium, the pool, which is what you're seeing in the front edifice of the building, um, which is you know surrounded by a fence and drywalled off from the interior of the school, from access from us in the school to those areas. All of that is still going on, and with that is the exterior construction, the parking lot, sidewalks, uh, brick laying, all that kind of stuff that goes with that. But those are the major areas still under construction. Some of the highlights of our tour, led by parent volunteer Debbie Stevens, included stops in the 150-seat Kiva, a conference room to be used for large group meetings or lectures, the Information Resource Center, or library to you and me, and the teachers' offices. At the new school, classrooms are shared by teachers, but each teacher has his or her own office. When, you, when I sit back and reflect on it, I realize that it's just a, it's a monumental time for Lake Orion. It, um, the moving from that school to this school, what this school is and what it represents to this community. I mean, this is a community project from beginning of inception, planning, design, construction, and now to the implementation because we have any day, 20-some parents here who are helping navigate, helping students, helping secretaries, teachers, administrators do things, all on a voluntary basis. And uh, they know more about the facility than some of us because they've been in every nook and cranny taking tours of, 
of students and parents a couple weeks ago and, and that sort of thing. So it's, it's, I guess, a very community effort. Mm -hmm. uh, that phrase, it takes a village to raise a child, you know, it, it, this has been every one of us mm -hmm. have had to, to make this work. It couldn't be just paid school staff. Isn't it amazing to think, if my math is correct, and that's kind of my weakness, <laughs> Most of those kids that you're, you see in that video are in their 40s yeah. today. I always think 40s. About that. I know. Oh. I know. Like 97, right? 97. 25 years that's ago. Amazing. So they're 17, 18 years old. So that's mind blowing. It is. And, th and some of their kids are, you know, heading that way probably too. I mean, <laughs> exactly. I mean, so, you know, for the last couple of years, I've had my girls there and then I have a two year gap until my, you know, stepson gets there. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to miss being in that building. I don't really have a reason to be there, and I've been there for the last five years. It's it's kind of sad. Yeah. I like that place. I get in there every once in a while. Roger Smith, who's the video production teacher, invites me to come in and talk to his mm. students, and I always enjoy that. I always get yeah. a kick out of that. Yeah. I did that a couple a couple months ago. I was invited to that. I was really impressed with um, their production. They did they did their show while we were there, and oh yeah, talked about their program a little bit. It was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, like it's really that. amazing. Uh, so now what we're going to lead into is uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was on vacation last week, so I'm, I'm just now getting <laughs> caught up here, but um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Orient Township had one of their biggest events of the year, if not the biggest event of the year. I was enjoy Dream Cruise, but the little ones enjoy the big rig gig, and uh, that took place in Friendship Park a couple of Fridays ago, and the turnout was tremendous. Take a look. On the evening of Friday, August 5th, Orion Township hosted its annual Big Rig Gig event at Friendship Park. Families came from far and wide, so the little ones could climb into vehicles of all shapes and sizes. Based on the turnout, the 2022 Big Rig Gig just might be the township's biggest event yet. I think in our post-COVID world, people just want to be outside and they want to be around other people and they want to be normal and everybody came out today everybody all the people are here today the road commission came out in force they brought about eight vehicles um, some of the usual some of the new the parks crew brought out um, everything that we have full force uh, the schools came out it's just it's a lot of the same but it's a lot of the same that brought new trucks the Lake Orion Police Department brought several vehicles, including their vintage 1941 Ford police car. It gives the department an opportunity to forge a bond with the young ones in the community. It, you know, this is a great experience for everybody that attends and for us. We really enjoy it with the kids. They, they like seeing us. They like climbing in the Hummer, the four-wheeler, the patrol car. They like to interact with us. Uh, we're passing out badge stickers, coloring books. It's just a great event for families to come and enjoy and see all the different equipment. The Sheriff's Department has a helicopter here. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun for all, as, as, including us. In addition to all the trucks and tractors scattered throughout the park, Sky Adventures arrived to launch several hot air balloons. Founded in 1975 and headquartered in Oxford, owner Dennis Collin estimates he's given rides to 40,000 passengers in the skies over Oakland County. I've never done it. I'm not nervous. I'm really excited, actually. Okay, if you want to sign up for it. My wife got it for me for my birthday. Yeah. So what have they told you? Where will you end up? They didn't tell us. <laughs> Apparently on they have up. GPS. When we land, they'll come get us. <laughs> or we walk back. I don't know. <laughs> What's going through your head as you saw the two previous balloons leave? Actually, uh, they were gliding. It made me feel much more comfortable. Yeah, I was just got excited watching them take off. Looking forward to it. So when I see a hot air balloon over M24, that's probably yours? That's probably ours. <laughs> so we usually have three or four balloons up each time we fly. Now this couple that just left, I said, where are you going? And they said, we have no idea. Is that how it works? That's how it works. You just <laughs> go with the wind and you never know. Whatever direction the wind decides to take you. Talk about the reactions you, you, as you look around, these kids and families watching it lift off. It's, it's magical. It's, it's, totally. We've... Uh, We've been doing this forever and just love seeing the expressions on the kids' faces and just their excitement. So the sky's blue, the rain held off, and it's a gorgeous day. 
If you'd like to go up, up and away in a beautiful balloon, you can call 248-628-1000 or visit skyadventures.com. From Friendship Park, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Look like fun, eh? Oh, sure. Could you go up in one of those? I, I would try. I would try. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm a little afraid of heights, but that looks like a fun adventure, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I would I would do it if I had my camera in hand. I don't think I would do it for fun, but I would do it <laughs> to record video. And uh, just a moment ago, we were talking about going up in planes. On my Facebook memories that came up today, today was the anniversary of when I went to the Flint Airport. Uh, and they were promoting their air show that they do, mm -hmm. and they had this trainer, this uh, vintage trainer with the two co two cockpits. Probably a T six. Uh, yeah, and uh, so I go to do interviews and stuff, and they go, they go, do you want to go up? And I was like, what? So they put me in the back cockpit with my camera. The pilot was in the front cockpit. And we went flying, and he goes, by the way, don't touch anything because. <laughs> If I was to step on something or hit something, it would control the plane. So I was a nervous wreck. So we are now joined by Bob Smith, a retired uh, fire department chief, now with the Oakland County Sheriff's Department. Um, and you said you're a pilot. I didn't know you were a pilot. Yes, sir. I've been, well, I can't fly anymore because of some surgeries I've had, but uh, I flew quite a few years. So. Wow. What did you fly? Yeah. What did you fly? Well, in Vietnam, I flew helicopters mm -hmm. and then just uh, single engine planes around here and that. But I used to take people up all over and we'd go over Lake Orion all the time. And uh, mm -hmm. But uh, you were talking about the 25 year anniversary of the high school. One yeah. of the original uh, trainers there, Mary Lenningham, she actually got to fly with the Blue Angels. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they wow. when they do those trains and stuff like yeah. that. So it was... Uh, I just wanted to throw that in there, That's that there's cool. opportunities to, for anybody to go up if they try, so. Did you hear um, the Maverick movie, the Top Gun Maverick movie, mm -hmm. which is a huge success right now, uh, the guy who did the stunt flying with the actors in the plane is a Lake Orion graduate, Lake mm -hmm. Orion native. Mm -hmm. I think one of the females are too, and I'm not sure. That's fantastic. But I read somewhere where I thought one of the female pilots was a from yeah. this area too. I'd sure like to get them in the studio to talk about their experience. That'd yeah. be amazing. Yeah, but what we have be. Bob in the studio for today, we have another anniversary coming up in a couple of weeks, the anniversary of 9-11, uh, now known as Patriot Day. And uh, Lake Orion goes all out to remember those that we lost on Patriot Day. Uh, so Bob, what is planned at the Veterans Memorial this year? This year we're going to hold it at noon on the 11th um, and uh, pretty much it's a remembrance I, I'd like to call the remembrance 21 years ago this happened and uh, anybody that's uh, I guess above the age of 26 should have some thought about it and know about it but there's a lot of young people around and what I've done this year is I'm going to have some of the top officials from the area here the police chief Lake Orion uh, fire chief and uh, lieutenant from the substation give us a little insight of what they went through when it first happened and what their thoughts were and stuff like that so do you have a keynote speaker plan that's that's I'm gonna have each of them just enter okay. enter into that and um, I was uh, I thought about a keynote speaker but at the same time I, again people are uh, the young people that come up there I want them to know what people thought about because even myself it's still you know I still think about it and, and uh, what went on and uh, the thing is is it didn't it didn't end that day uh, I was just looking doing some research and stuff like that and almost doubled the number of people and first responders have passed away since mm -hmm. from uh, issues from the 9-11 and that so it's not something that just happened that day okay. as tragic as it was it's still continuing on today so yeah, usually this time of the year is when you start to see a lot of the documentaries show up on yeah. television. And f for me personally, it's it's hard to relive it. It's kind of painful to see that happen all over again. Um, but every year I learn something new, maybe see some new video that I hadn't seen before. Um, talk about the importance of, um, even though people might say, I don't want to relive it, talk about the importance of making sure that people don't forget it. Well. 
I like to I like to let people understand that this wasn't an act of war. This was some this was some terrorist act that um, affected 2,900 people from 70 different countries for no reason other than to go to work that day. That would be that would be like uh, a group of people here going to work and the terrorists just deciding that they're going to attack us for no reason whatsoever. There was none. Yeah. You know, I mean. I, I don't want to get into a lot of what's going on now, but in Ukraine and stuff, you know, the Russians think they have their reasons for being there and everything. Everybody thinks they have their reasons. Nobody had a reason for, for that day. Yeah. And uh, it could happen again. And it and I still say they won that day anyway because we're still so cautious of what, what we do and what we say and what we, you know, experience every day and everything. So even if they never did it again, they basically put us on edge from sure. a country that was just, you know, we had our internal problems and stuff like that, but we did not, um, uh, we did not allow anybody from the outside to interfere with us and everything, and that happened that day. Um, the thing that I'd like to bring up to everybody is what happened after where total strangers was embracing each other, helping each other, and you know, I'd like to see that again today because yeah. we're, we're getting a little crazy right now. So that's the reason I'm very passionate about this is something happened bad that day and I want people to realize that it could happen again if we don't start embracing each other and taking care of each other. Yeah, everyone was a patriot in the days after 9-11 and you know, I remember sitting in my car at a light car pulls up alongside of me, you look over at the person next to you, he nods, I nod back, people were hanging flags, and, and that lasted for a little while, and then it kind of went away, and I, I don't know why it went away, and you're right, I would love to embrace that you know, where every everyone is a neighbor and a friend, and um, we every, all Everybody, Joe, was together. an American first, yeah. you know. Put everything else aside, they were American first. And I, I can't believe the number of people put flags out on there. Not necessarily right, but I didn't care. They were hung, you know, <laughs> and, and they, <laughs> and they uh, but that's why, I, that's why we try to convey this every year is to keep people, keep it fresh in everybody's mind that we need to uh, come together and protect each other mm -hmm. and keep the outside forces out. Kim, I'll ask you the same thing, but Bob, I want to ask you, where were you that morning on 9-11? I was sitting in an auditorium at the Kellogg Center in Michigan State University. We were getting ready to start our, our yearly fall inspectors class. At, uh, and, and a lot of us were just sitting in the auditorium looking through paperwork, what we were going to be talking or seeing over the week and everything. And this guy, I'll, I'll take it to my deathbed. The guy come in, he says, some dumb fool just flew into the uh, Twin Towers. And we're all sitting there, is it that uh, foggy over there or whatever? Yeah. Because I don't know if you remember or not, but a B-17 flew into the Empire State Building many yeah. years ago, but it was a foggy, rainy day. Yeah. And so we we really didn't grasp it at that point, you yeah. know. It's I thought, before I saw the video, I thought it was a Cessna. Yeah. I thought it was a two-seater or right. something. We, nobody really knew what it was until, you know, so we kind of just sloughed it off. And then all of a sudden, two or three people come running at the same time. Another plane hit the other tower. And then we all jumped up and we went to the TV to see what was going on, you know. But, no, that'll, that'll stay with me for, for the rest of my life because, I, you know, we're just... Again, part of the fire department, you know, we're going to learn about how to protect people in their buildings, fire inspections wise and stuff like that, but not uh, not terrorists and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. And yeah, totally unprepared for that. Yeah. And, oh, no, boy. I was just going to say one, one last thing is the rest of the day, everybody stood there or sat in their seats or whatever with blank stares on their oh, face. Sure. They, yeah. they had... We couldn't even discuss it with each other because we had no idea what to do. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. comprehend. That's what true. was your memories of that day? So I had only, my, my oldest was at, we just dropped her off at school, uh, and I was at home, funny enough, trying to make reservations for Disney because we were going on a trip, and it was dial-up, 
at the time, right? Um, and it kept getting cut off. The phone kept ringing, and I was mm. like, "What?" I was in the basement at, at my desk, and I, I kept thinking, "Who's trying to call me?" Because I'm trying to make these, you know, reservations. It was my mom, and she said, "You need to turn the television on." So I went upstairs and I turned the television on, and I watched um, the aftermath of the first one, and then while I was standing there, the second one wow. hit. And um, so, as you guys know, I'm, I'm. My husband is, you know, Navy. He mm. was so, we were not together at the time, but he lived in Hawaii at the time. Mm. And so we stood there and watched it for a little bit, and I thought, oh my gosh, it's whatever time in Hawaii he would still be sleeping. He wouldn't be watching this. Um, so I called him, uh, and I said, you need, to, you need to wake up. And he said, what's going on? And I said, you just need to turn the television on. He turned the TV on, and he got really quiet, and then he said, I have to go. Mm. And then I didn't hear from him for a very long time wow. because he went, you know, directly overseas. Um, but I was concerned, you know, it was like, do I need to go pick up my child from school? What, you know, what do I, like, it was those kinds of things. Like, are we all, like, is this going to happen everywhere else? Is this going to happen in other cities? I don't know. Um, and then we, um, you know, just went about the rest of the day, like you said, and then I think you know, I was at a store or something. Maybe I think it was at a Blockbuster. I don't remember. The president had come on to do, you know, to to address the country, and we all stood there in the store, like in the Blockbuster, just standing there, like mm. all together, just crying and and listening to him. Which, you know, I really appreciated his leadership in that moment. You know, I can't mm. I can't say enough about how, at least our personal family, we felt, you know, um, we felt we had a good strong president who yeah. was going to take care of us at that moment. But um, the one other thing um, that, that was interesting was that we were on our way back home from a trip and we stopped in Pennsylvania um, at the, the flight 90, 93, I believe, right? Um, the memorial there mm -hmm. to see that. Um, uh, it, it, I can't even, like, it's hard to talk about what you, you know, but yeah. you're sitting there and, and they have this beautiful, um, monument and it's got the names of people engraved in it but it's like a, a ghost engraving you mm. can't it's not colored you have to kind of turn your your head to see it and stuff the people um mm. who passed away there but and there's a big you know boulder in the middle of the field and stuff so right. it's something that you know in our house we we go to the you know the the ceremony all the time obviously well, he has to <laughs> well he has to he does. um but you know for me one of the meaningful things was watching my kids when they were much younger touch a piece of the twin tower so yeah uh, that was really meaningful anyway wow Whew. yeah Woo! yeah <laughs> it's still well, there i uh i usually start my day a little bit later so I, I usually sleep in during the week and so i was sound asleep when the first plane hit um, my sister tried calling me i slept through her uh call she left a voicemail which yeah. i slept through and then a few minutes later, phone rings again. It woke me up. And as I'm walking toward the phone, the answer machine kicked in. And my sister's just screaming into the mm. voicemail. So I picked it up as she was leaving the message. I said, what's going on? She's like, plane hit the Twin Towers. And again, I thought it was a Cessna two-seater. I didn't really think much about it. Went over to the TV, turned it on. I'm like, that's a jumbo jet. That's yeah. a passenger jet. And like you said, I, I, I couldn't comprehend what I was seeing, and I was seeing the replay of the second plane and everything, and I, I should have gone into work, but I just sat there on the couch, numb, never went into work. Phone rang all day, talking to friends and family, and one of the vivid memories I have was seeing the tower br live broadcast. News anchor was talking. I don't remember which channel it was. I was talking to a buddy of mine, and I saw the big antenna on the top of the one one of the towers like start to move, and I. Again, I couldn't understand what I was seeing. And then mm -hmm. I saw it come down, and the news anchor was still talking. Like, he wasn't looking at a monitor. Right. And he was just chatting as I saw it start to come down. And I'm, I'm getting goosebumps as I'm describing it. And I'm like, the, the building is going down. And, and I, I couldn't believe it. And me and my friend were on the phone like, are you seeing this? And never thought that at the end of the day, both those towers would be gone. I, I just never no. expected. The Empire Strikes Back survived that impact yeah. and still standing today. But somehow, both of those towers came down and just have those vivid memories yeah. of that. So, yeah. you know, we've had we've had some catastrophes in the in the U.S. where it's brought everybody to their yeah. to just 
mm -hmm. stand there and stare. I don't know if you remember or not, but the Challenger when it when it exploded, yeah. the the guy was still giving uh, directions and everything like he didn't even like it didn't even happen. Right. And the same thing happened with this. You know, the guy is the the newscaster sitting there talking, and it's like, do you not realize that <laughs> this is going on? this yeah. is yeah. this is gone? You know, so yeah. I've been to the New York Memorial since. I know people. I have friends that were at Ground Zero in in the days that followed. Uh, the memorial's pretty moving. I, I I couldn't bring myself to go inside the exhibit. We went to the fountains where the Twin Towers used to stand and stuff, but I just wasn't mentally ready to go into the the museum right. that they have there. I'll, I'm sure I'll go eventually, but um, but I never saw the Twin Towers in person prior to 9/11, so I've never visited. Did you no. ever visit the Twin Towers? No, I had I uh, I had seen them far off. You know, coming into New York City, you could see them and stuff, but I never yeah. was right there. Yeah. And as a side note, we went on the fifth anniversary of after and my wife and I and we were walking around and that's and it was Labor Day when they were announcing what they planned on doing for a memorial and everything so there was quite a few people there and I mentioned to my wife at that time and she I says do you look at these people around here they're still walking around like they didn't even still hadn't comprehended it right. five years later you know yeah. it's like the, the workers were doing their work and stuff like that but nobody was having a good time or right. joking or anything yeah, yeah. everybody had a, a stare on their face and that yeah. and what really shocked me was the Deutsche Bank still had not been touched hmm. they still had the, the the screening up on the side of it and that five years later really? yeah so uh. So September 11th falls on a Sunday this year. You said the ceremony begins at noon? Begins at noon at uh, the, the Veterans, Veterans Memorial. Memorial, and that's right. at M24 and Heights Road. We'll be there with our cameras to record it, as we always do, and uh, I'm sure we will see you there. Well, I appreciate you giving me this few minutes to, to bring it out to the people. I hope to see a good crowd there. So. Yeah, so come on out on Sunday, September 11th, and let's honor our first responders who are rushing in as everyone else is rushing out and uh, there's a lot of them there police fire paramedics everything are there at the ceremony so you can thank them in person so uh, hopefully we'll see you on september 11th uh at noon okay. at the veterans memorial thank you uh thanks for coming out uh let's go to this clip it's kind of hard to segue out of that but let's go to this clip the uh, concert season is pretty much wrapping up here in lake orion uh we've recorded a lot of the concerts at the wildwood amphitheater uh, this season, and here's a snippet from uh, a recent concert, the Beatles tribute band, um, and hopefully you'll enjoy it.
So there you go. Uh, what an amazing uh, concert season we've had here in Lake Orion with uh, plenty to see and do for everyone this summer. So yeah. I don't know if there's anything left. Are you aware of any concerts that are left for this season? They're done. As yeah. far as I, well, if Orion Dot Events is done. They're, they're yeah. Rockstar was the final one this weekend. Okay. Yeah. All right. Boy, that went by fast. It did. It? Yeah. It really did. School's <laughs> going to start and all that good stuff. But um, actually, Kit, I'm going to just interrupt you for just a minute because I really have to say something. Um, w you know, it, it's, a, it's an exciting weekend. It's a big weekend, the 25th anniversary of, you know, uh, of the high school and all that stuff. But I think the most important thing that we need to say is a big happy birthday to to you, Joe. Oh. <laughs> so we've got a little oh, something geez. here for you. Snuck up on me there. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joe. Happy birthday to you. Uh, thanks. Happy birthday. Thank you. It's the 30th anniversary of my 26th birthday. Woo! <laughs> Probably the only one that. I light the candles, but since the yeah. retired fire chief was here, the. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fire hazard. No fire you, we weren't lighting candles. Standing <laughs> by with the extinguisher <laughs> just in case. Yes, that was yes. great. The viewers aren't here to share in the cake. I know. We'll leave a couple pieces for you guys at home. Well, the way home and pick up a piece. Right? We'll have it. We're having cake after the show, everybody. Cake after the show. Well, thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. It. Happy birthday. Thanks. <laughs> I'll be yeah. busy at Dragon on the Lake on my actual birthday. So. <laughs> well, That's thank so you funny. very much. <laughs> when you were like, so you mentioned something about a cake or whatever. Or I said, yeah, you know, I couldn't bake you one. Or bake you some cookies, whatever. There you go. Perfect. That's awesome. Thanks a lot. Can't wait to cut into it. But, uh, we, you know, we wanted to talk about something else that's been uh, viral videos been going around, like, <laughs> around the country, but it's local. Uh, have you guys seen the video of the reopening of the slide at Belle Isle? <laughs> now, as a kid, Belle Isle was a destination mm. for our family. We went to Belle Isle all the time. Um, we'd climb in the fountain and stuff. And we would go on that giant metal slide. And I have memories of <laughs> getting airborne on that slide and getting burned on the metal uh, part of the slide. And I don't know how long it's been closed, but apparently they just recently reopened it. And they oh. said within hours they closed it again. And the video of people going down that slide is hysterical. So growing up in, <laughs> in the era of America's Funniest Home Videos, I don't like to laugh at other people when they're <laughs> experiencing something like that, but I cannot help myself because, you know, we're, we're trained to laugh at people falling and all that. I feel really bad for some of those people, but that has me, had me in stitches <laughs> all weekend long seeing all of that. And then... Um, then the heat, yeah, I can't imagine because when I was little, we had those skinny slides that were like 100 feet tall and they were yeah. always really hot. Yeah. I can't imagine the heat that's radiating from that really big slide. So. Yeah. Woo. But it's funny, like, seeing people from all over the country posting TikTok videos. Uh, there was mm -hmm. one woman who got airborne and when she came down, her shoe went <laughs> flying off and she <laughs> laid there at the bottom of the slide while her daughter went and found her shoe and <laughs> came back. And I'm like, now they know our pain. <laughs> Growing up in the Detroit area. So. Well, don't we always talk about millennials don't get it? Like, if you, what, like <laughs> now they do. If they were on that slide, they understand where yeah, us, right. uh, you know, Gen Xers come from. <laughs> so go on TikTok, go on YouTube. You'll uh, you'll see videos of people going down that slide. It's pretty funny. And I don't know what they're going to do to fix the problem, but uh, oh, we'll see if they reopen. Uh, our next video clip we have coming up is from a show um, that. Um, uh, Becky produces called Orient Outreach and uh, recently she had uh, Penny Schultz in uh, to talk about the Oxford Revival um, which uh, I guess it's going to take place the 24th through the 27th mm -hmm. 5 to 10 p.m. each night in downtown Oxford in Centennial Park which there is a go. beautiful park yes. um, so let's find out a little bit about the, the Oxford Revival
Hi everyone, we're so glad you're here today for this edition of Orion Outreach. We're here in the studio at Orion Neighborhood Television with members of Lake Point Community Church in Oxford. Heidi and Yvonne are helping others in the community plan Oxford Revival, which will take place the end of August. Stay tuned, let's hear what's happening in our communities. Well, um, we've been we meeting with several different churches, so it's not just our church, it's a conglomerate, mm -hmm. you know. Who are they? Event. Um, so we have, um, I have to look at my notes real quick, like, um, where did I put that? Okay, so we have Lake Point, obviously. Yes. Firmly Rooted in Oxford. Oh, good. Desert River in Lake Orion. Mm -hmm. um, Echo Christian Fellowship in Lake Orion. Oxford Free Methodist and United Methodist in Oxford. All those churches are part of the planning team. Yes. And then um, Cavalry Lutheran and the Living Army. Um, Cavalry Lutheran, Lutheran is in Clarkston and the Living Army is in Lake Orion and they're, part, they're participating as well. That's so. fantastic. So mm -hmm. you're bringing everyone to come together mm -hmm. and just yeah. talk about Jesus mm -hmm. and the love that he has for mm -hmm. us and That's just right. share this heart that we have for revival. Mm -hmm. Who wants to touch on what revival is? Well, I was looking up uh, the definition of revival the other day, and it mm -hmm. says an improvement in the condition or strength of something. And, you know, after this past year, Oxford needs its strength back. Yes. Right? So uh, we, we felt that, again, it, it was important that we do this now, even though it's been in planning for some time. Uh, a pastor said that revival is needed not so much uh, because of the depravity of the wicked, but because of the indifference of the faithful. Mm. See, Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And so we know that our land, and not just in Oxford, but our land is in need of some healing. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of division going on, and we felt like it's time now to bring up the fact that God has a plan and purpose for everybody out there. Yes, absolutely. So, so retired Pastor Holt is a part of this. Tell us a little bit uh, about how he's involved. Well, um, I believe he's going to be singing and playing his guitar, which everybody loves. Yes. And um, I believe he's going to be speaking as well, and he's just a phenomenal speaker. He speaks right to the heart of people, mm -hmm. and um, he's just a very talented, very kind man, so we're very blessed to have him. I'm excited when I saw the lineup that he would be a part of this. And yeah. Pastor Rochelle Beckmeyer, she has a heart. Oh, yeah. for people, some with special needs, and those who just need a little extra love and mm -hmm. tender care. And mm -hmm. I'm glad that she'll be a part of that. Right. And we also have Pastor Rob Johnson mm -hmm. with the Oxford Free Methodist Church, and Pastor Chad Jordan, you mentioned, with the Desert River Church. And there's others as well. I'm going to just take a moment and talk about the keynote speaker, Peter Warren. Mm -hmm. He's a native of Sydney, Australia, and is an international leader in youth with the mission YWAM and has ministered in over 100 countries. YWAM is a global movement of Christians from many denominations dedicated to presenting Jesus personally to this generation. Mm -hmm. And then our, one of the performers is artist and songwriter Zach Radcliffe. He's a professional country and Christian recording artist, and he's a singer-songwriter at Pearl Sound Studios. We have performer Nikki Gracious. Um, Nikki began his life as an abused child in a very troubled and pain-filled environment, including having to witness do, um, domestic violence and domestic harm um, mm. uh, to his mother. He now writes and performs music to proclaim the truth of the amazing love and mercy of God who redeems the lost, sets the oppressed free, and restores to those the incredible hope that something very wonderful can and will happen to all who call on the name mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ as Lord. And then we have performer Rip. He's an award-winning recording artist and producer, filmmaker, and DJ. He's born in Illinois, was born in Illinois, and he's a recording artist and producer. So he created his independent record label, 
and he's released plenty of debut songs, so we're pretty excited to know that he will be there also performing, and he was nominated for Best Contemporary Christian Album through the Grammy Awards. Mm. So people, you want to get involved in this revival. There really are some incredible speakers that this planning team has brought together so that we can have revival in our hearts and also in Oxford and the surrounding communities. Mm -hmm. So I hope you enjoyed this time with Yvonne and Heidi. It really has been wonderful to hear about Oxford Revival. Our town, our time. This is what we need to do to come together, and I hope to see you there. Bring your lawn chair, bring your family, and be ready to enjoy a, an incredible four nights in Oxford, downtown at Centennial Park. I'm Penny Schultz. Thanks so much for joining us. You know what also kicked off this past weekend, I didn't get a chance to get out there, but uh, Michigan Renaissance Festival started this past weekend, which is a sure sign that fall is here. Uh -huh. I uh, hate to admit it, but I, I do love fall. I do. And it's been a really, really hot summer, so I'm kind of looking forward to it. Yeah, a little and reprieve. with the arrival of fall, believe it or not, brings football, football. season. <laughs> uh, fantasy draft is coming up soon. And uh, Lions are in the preseason, and I attended uh, media day at Rochester High School where they introduced us to all the coaches and some of the players mm -hmm. uh, that make up the OAA High School Football League. And uh, there's a new division this year. There's red, white, blue, and gold. A new team has joined uh, this conference or whatever you want to call it. Um, and so my happy place is being on the sideline with my yeah. camera uh, at the start of the Dragons football season. Uh, coach Chris Bell has returned as head coach. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so uh, is it Sammy does the football preview show. Uh, the, uh, let's take a look at, uh, at uh, what he has to say for this upcoming high school football season. Good evening, Lake Orion. Welcome to Lake Orion Football Preview Show on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Termina, and I've got two very special guests with me. Coach Bell. Nice to be here. And I got Coach Simon as well, our freshman nice football to be here. coach. Thanks, thanks for having me. All right, um, I want to get into it. Um, coach, welcome back. It's been a long time since I've had you on the preview show. It is. It's, it's great to be back. It's been a lot of fun. A good summer. Awesome. Um, also, you recently won the Michigan High School Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame. You were involved in that. You, you, um, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I was, uh, I was part of the uh, 2022 class, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it was a great honor. You know, and on one hand, it means I've been around a while, uh, but it just means that uh, I've had great players and been lucky to coach with some outstanding assistant coaches, and we've had some good teams, and uh, you know, so it was, uh, even though it's an individual honor, I, I really feel it was more of a program honor for all mm -hmm. the people who have been part of this thing over the last 20-some uh, years. When did you start coaching, Coach? Oh, geez, my first year coaching, I, I actually was coaching when I was in college as a student assistant uh, in the late 80s. And I, did, I coached for a year at Birmingham Seahome while I did my student teaching. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was the head coach at Linden High School in... Uh, 91 and 92, and then St. Clement High School, 93 and 94. I uh, was at Lake Orion, 95, 96, and 97 as an assistant, became the head coach of Lake Orion, 98, so. Awesome. Um, also, you, you did step away back in 2016 to become the athletic director. I did. What's that experience been like? Well, you know, the uh, 2016, I served as both the athletic director and the head football coach, mm -hmm. but uh, I promised our superintendent at the time that if I took the athletic director job that uh, following the 2016 season that I would step away uh, so I could focus on uh, the other sports and really learn the ins and outs of the job because it's, uh, even though I've been involved with athletics most of my adult life, um, there, there is a learning curve. It was good. It was good to spend time, uh, you know, really with the other sports and uh, learned a lot. Uh, but uh, make a long story short, 
Uh, John Blackstock stepped in and did a good job, as our, as our coaches all know, uh, when John approached me mid-season of last year, letting me know that he was going to step down at the end of the year. Uh, we had conversations with uh, our school administration, and they agreed that they would support me in taking it back on. So, you know, in the athletic world, uh, you know, my number one responsibility is to all of our teams. Mm -hmm. uh, in my spare time, I get to coach football. So it's, uh, you know, we're, we're, our athletic program, you know, we're, we're in good shape. You know, we've got systems in place. Uh, the teams know that they have my, uh, I, I want to make sure there's not a drop off in my mm -hmm. support for them just because I'm coaching football. And a lot of the stuff that we do in terms of coaching football, a lot of the preparation is done during the summer. It's done late in the evenings. It's done on Sundays uh, so that I can focus on my job as the AD. Awesome. Um, I wanted to recap last season briefly. Um, we had a great group of kids. Uh, the record was we, were th we finished the season three and six. Our sub-varsity programs were undefeated at nine and zero oh in both freshman and JV. Can you recap briefly about how the how that season went? Well, I know they, it was it was frustrating. You know, obviously uh, freshman JV had outstanding seasons, a lot of mm -hmm. talent, uh, very good coaching staff. So they did a nice job and uh, bodes well for the future here of our mm -hmm. program. Varsity wise, you know, they started off great with uh, uh, a big win over you guys mm -hmm. and uh, the following week went down to North Farmington, and I think they they were caught by surprise, a little shell shocked after that game, and mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and, and, and they they played one of the state's toughest schedules last year, mm -hmm. as we will again, and it was hard to recover. They, at times they played some really good football, mm -hmm. uh, at times they struggled. Um, you know, it's a little uncharacteristic as to uh, you know as to as to why they struggled. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of it, they were young, inexperienced. Mm -hmm. They had some injuries, and you know, in our league, which is is there's no forgiveness in our league. Right. If you if you're not at 100, percent you have a hard time competing. And I think that's really what happened. You know, they just they, they lost a couple, they lost some confidence, and it was just really hard to turn it around. Being an underwriter for Dragon Sports is the best advertising opportunity you could have with Orion Neighborhood Television. You can underwrite with ONTV for the full Lake Orion High School sports year for one low price. Choose your level of support for Dragon Football and have a presence on Orion Neighborhood Television for the entire Lake Orion High School sports season. Underwriters will have exposure for 10 months on Comcast Channel 10 and AT&T UVerse Channel 99 in the Orion area. All programs are uploaded to YouTube. You can also view us on Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire. The programs are also available indefinitely for on-demand viewing. You can't beat this advertising deal, so underwrite with ONTV for the full Dragon Sports year for just one low price. Call the studio for more details at 248-393-1060. So thanks to Anthony Taramina for that uh, snippet. You can see the interview in its entirety, entirety on YouTube uh, and locally here on ONTV. And good luck to uh, Coach Bell and the Dragons football team. I'm really excited about the upcoming season. Me too. So, and we want to kind of wrap things up a little bit with uh, a look at what's happening uh, in the Lake Orion community over the next uh, week or so. Uh, so once again, here's Becky to uh, talk about uh, the quick hits. Don't miss the Oxford Revival this week. Area churches from Oxford, Orion, and Clarkson will be hosting a four-night revival in downtown Oxford at Centennial Park from August 24th through the 27th. The Revival will run from 5 to 10 p.m. each night and will feature programs for all age groups. Stop by for this free, uplifting event. On Thursday, the Orange Library will be hosting Game Board Night. Join the library from 6.30 to 8.30 to play some of the latest and greatest board games. Games will be provided by the library, but feel free to bring your own. This evening of fun is for all ages. Lake Orange Dragon on Lake kicks off this Thursday. Downtown Lake Orange comes alive during the Orient Art Center's annual festival. Come and celebrate art, music, dragon boat racing, and a lot of fun with events for all ages. For more information and a full list of events, visit dragononthelake.com. 
During Independence Oaksburg sunset on Crooked Lake, cruise around the lake on a pontoon boat while the park historian provides interesting tidbits of information about the surrounding area. The cost is $5 per person. Register by calling 248-858-0916. They always say that one man's trash is another man's treasure. Find your new treasure at Orient Township's largest outdoor garage sale this Saturday. The sale will be held at the Orient Center and runs from 9 to 3 p.m. Admission and parking is free. Now it's time to take a look at this week's weather. Wednesday's forecast is calling for mostly sunny skies with high of 86 and low 63. Evening storms on Thursday with high of 83, low 62. Partly cloudy on Friday with high of 77, low 55. Mostly sunny on Saturday with high of 82 and low 61. And partly cloudy on Sunday with high of 85 and low 67. So that's it for this week's ON TV Quick Hit. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time. So there you go, and of course we want to remind everybody uh, that Dragon on the Lake kicks off this Friday, mm -hmm. August 26th, uh, with vendors in downtown Lake Orion and... Uh, chalk uh, art drawing. Chalk art, which is always amazing in, in, on the streets of downtown Lake Orion. On Sunday is the boat races where teams of about 20 are competing on the lake. As a matter of fact, they're adding a new event on Saturday mm -hmm. uh, with high school students are going to compete against each other on Saturday in those, those dragon right. boats. Two o'clock. Uh, Two o'clock yeah. on Saturday. And, and on Sunday, things kick off at like 9 in the morning. And that's mm -hmm. where I will be all day Sunday is uh, covering the Dragon Boat Races from Greens Park. So get out to downtown Lake Orion this weekend, biggest weekend of the year. Last major summer bash, pains summer me to say. blowout. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot to see and do. And visit, i, I got to emphasize this, visit the local businesses in downtown Lake yes. Orion. A lot of times local businesses are impacted by these major events. Um, so make sure you don't forget that they're still shopping yeah. and dining and snacks and refreshments and all sorts of stuff going on yeah. uh, while Dragon on the Lake is going on. So uh, don't forget our local business people too. So I'm 100%. Sure that's uh, close to your heart. It is close to my heart. And yes, you're <laughs> absolutely right. They would love that. Yeah. So uh, hopefully we will see you um, this weekend. Uh, I'm going to try and get away on Saturday. I don't know if some of you would be interested in this. Uh, I'm going to take a little trek on Saturday morning to Marysville, Michigan, uh, where Mickey Dolenz of oh, the Monkees cool. will be making an appearance. No way. Yes. Uh, with the Monkey Mobile that you saw in the video that we showed earlier. Oh. Now, Mickey cool. is the last monkey yes. standing. The three of them are gone now. And so he's going to be in Marysville during Hot Wheels weekend, uh, signing autographs and posing for oh, pictures. Wow. So I'm going to try and get out there, say hi to Mickey, get a picture, him sign something, and then get back out here to Lake Orion. Uh, for Dragon on Lake. Oh, Good and my co-worker Joey, uh, his countdown of being a single guy is, is coming to an end. <laughs> he gets married this Saturday. Uh, so congratulations, Joey, and uh, looking forward to that big party as well. Congratulations, so, buddy. Sorry, ladies, he's off the market. So. <laughs> it's a big weekend. Yeah, big weekend. so much going on. So, Kim, thanks again for uh, once again coming down to uh, to Orient today. It's my pleasure. And thanks to Bob Smith for joining us. And uh, we will see you in two weeks on the next Orient Today Live. Thanks for watching. Happy birthday. Thanks. <laughs>